Okay, so that's my uh, last lecture. So it went very quickly. It's uh, I'm surprised it's all, all over already. Uh, so the last lecture, yeah, as I promise, we'll talk about on-shell methods for EFT. Yeah, but before I get uh, to EFT, yeah, I will have to uh, for probably half of you that haven't uh, seen this kind of formalism, I have to introduce yeah what it what it's about. Yeah, so there will be uh, for the, uh, those yeah the. Uh, those that already know this formalism, yeah, you'll have to um, yeah, wait until something interesting happens. Yeah, so let me uh, uh, start with this. So we'll be considering uh, massless theories. Yeah, so you have a particle, massless particle, will be described by these. Normally, yeah, you describe it by a momentum uh, p mu, yeah, with p squared equals to zero. Mm -hmm. So uh, you could uh, write this kind of combination. Yeah, so this is the P mu sigma mu, yeah, where the sigma mu are this uh, the usual matrix, uh, the, the usual sigma mu is one and Pauli matrices, yeah, and then I also have sigma bar mu is uh, one and minus Pauli matrices. So P mu sigma mu, yeah, this is uh, you can write it in components, yeah, and then it will be given by P zero. Uh, from from the unit matrix, then minus p three from the from sigma three, and then minus p one uh, uh, plus i p two, and uh, minus p one minus i p two. Like it's a two by two matrix, yeah. And then if you calculate oh, take p zero plus p three, when you calculate the determinant of this matrix, yeah, so. Uh, you you find easily yeah that this is uh, equal the determinant of p is equal to p, p squared yeah so you see that this how how this uh, arises yeah and uh, this is equal to zero so uh, if the, the the matrix has zero determinant yeah then it means that you can write uh, write it in a uh, as a as a product of two vectors yeah so. We had it lambda p alpha and then lambda twiddle p alpha dot. So this is like um, the, this. This step is uh, is the transition from uh, from uh, uh, momentum vectors to to spinor. Yeah. So the information yeah, about the momentum is now in, is in this uh, language. Yeah, is hidden in the spinor. Yeah, and then I will. In a second, I will uh, tell you why this is this is an interesting thing to do. So yeah, so you can easily see that if you write it in this form, yeah, then the uh, p sigma i is uh, given by something like that, yeah, like lambda one, lambda one, lambda two, lambda two, twiddle, twiddle, lambda one, lambda two, twiddle, lambda two, lambda one, twiddle, and then the determinant is 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 zero, right? So so that's the uh, that's just uh, that's a general rewriting yeah, of uh, the two by two uh, matrix with determinant equal to zero. Uh, so what what else we can say? So this this has uh, the dimension of p is uh, mass to the power of one. So the dimension of lambda is the, equal to the dimension of lambda twiddle. Yeah, is uh, uh, mass to one half. Uh, okay, so now uh, you can also, uh, when you have this, yeah, you can define p mu sigma bar mu is equal to lambda twiddle p alpha dot and lambda twiddle p uh, al alpha. Okay, so sorry, maybe I should should write it like what 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 is this alpha? The, this indices, yeah, so uh, the this, uh, the alpha indices are the indices yeah, of the matrix, yeah, and you can do the same thing here. Alpha dot alpha yeah, is uh, equal to this. So this uh, uh, there is uh, here you have a spinors yeah with the uh, upper index. Here we have spinors with the with the lower index yeah, and they are connected by you can you can raise. And lower indices using the uh, epsilon, the, the two-dimensional epsilon tensor. Yeah, so so it just means that uh, lambda one is equal to lambda two, and lambda 
2 is equal to minus lambda 1. Yeah, so that's the that's uh, uh, the. So see that the spinors, yeah, it's uh, very much like the uh, two component spinors. So two component spinors, is, they are very much like what I was using for the. Um, to, to write down the Lagrangians yeah, for, for in the theory with uh, spinors. The only difference is that you have to remember is this, that these lambdas, yeah, they are commuting. They are, they are not fields, yeah, they are just uh, commuting uh, variables. Yeah, so they don't have to contain any, any creation, annihilation operators. Yeah, they, 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 so in particular, yeah, you, they are commuting. Yeah, so for example, lambda 1, lambda 2 is equal to lambda 2. Um, if you write it like that, maybe. Uh, so I say, say lambda p1, lambda p2 is equal to lambda p2, lambda p1. So now uh, when we have spinors, yeah, we can uh, make uh, if we have two two different spinors, yeah, we can do um, we can have uh, make contractions, yeah, of 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 the, and this this will be Lorentz invariance uh, quantities, yeah. So for example, let's say we have uh, lambda one. Uh, course, uh, associated with momentum p1 and then lambda 2 associated with momentum p. So this is called this this no, no, normally we don't we, there is an implicit convention yeah that the the indices yeah go from here to here in this kind of contraction yeah and then you just write it as lambda 1 lambda 2 and then uh, you typically uh, contracted so 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 you instead of writing all these lambdas yeah you can write it as just one two yeah so that's to to uh, to write uh, to to just avoid writing too much and then there is uh, for the twiddle spinners yeah we can do the same except that the and my the convention that I'm using is that in this case the indices will go the other way and it's still denoted like this and this is denoted like this. Yeah, so this is the. So now uh, come so, uh, uh, first calculations. Yeah, we can do with the spinors. Is that uh, when you have how do I, how do I how does this uh, spinor multiplication relate to the momentum multiplication? Yeah, the or so this is the uh, Lorentz, of course, Lorentz invariant contraction. Yeah, of this two moments. So we can write this 2p1, p2. We can write it that this is trace p1 sigma, p2 sigma bar. Right? So this trace of two sigmas, yeah, is yes, basically deltas, yeah. So, so the tra trace of uh, sigma sigma bar is two eta mu nu, yeah. Like with two indices, yeah. So this is just p1, p2. Okay, but we I just wrote a little bit above, yeah, what is P1 sigma, what is P2 sigma, yeah, so this is uh, uh, lambda 1 alpha, lambda 2 uh, beta dot, and then I contracted here, lambda, uh, oh, sorry, lambda 1 beta dot, lambda 2 beta dot, lambda 1 alpha. So you see that this is, uh, sorry, yeah, so this is this is the rewriting yeah of p1 sigma. This is the rewriting of p2 sigma bar. So uh, we see that we have the contraction one two. So we can write it that this is equal to uh, square bracket one two, and then we have a contraction of so of two one so times two one. Yeah, so this kind of uh, so you can rewrite the momentum. Multiplication, yeah, in terms of uh, spinor multiplication, yeah. So these are spinor contraction, yeah, spinor sp con contraction of spinors and a con contraction of twiddle spinors. Uh, I don't, I don't. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. I forgot. I forgot. Uh, I forgot all all tildes. Sorry. Yeah. So this. The, oh, this. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. So this is. Uh, 
yeah, so it's yeah, in the TSO, so yeah, so you have a contraction yeah, of twiddles, yeah, and a contraction of untwiddles. Now, uh, one more thing about this uh, formalism. So P sigma, you can see that it's a normally it's a real matrix, yeah? So there is nothing, uh, so, so it's in, in particular it's a, or not a real, but it's a Hermitian matrix. So uh, if you take the dagger, yeah, then you should get uh, the same thing. So this, that for, for real momenta, you, this implies that lambda p alpha star is the same as lambda uh, p alpha dot. Yeah. So that the twiddle is just a, a fancy way of writing the uh, conjugation. But as we said in the moment, like if, you, if you work with uh, onshore amplitudes, you sometimes you have to um, go away from real mo real momenta yeah to define certain things you have to uh, will ha have to leave real momenta and that's why we write twiddle and not bar or star yeah just to, because uh, to allow for this possibility yeah that they are th that we work with complex momenta and then and then for complex momenta this relation uh, doesn't hold good Okay, so we can we can trade this uh, therefore, yeah. Uh, what else uh, do you need to know? Yeah, maybe that this uh, you can show uh, quick easily that um, this this uh, spinors they satisfy the vial equation. So if you uh, multiply p sigma bar times uh, lambda p, that is given by uh, the so this will be lambda uh, sorry p sigma bar lambda p twiddle uh, alpha dot beta lambda p beta so this is uh, equal to lambda p so twiddle times p p and this thing is zero yeah so this is uh, because uh, if you can rewrite, maybe we can rewrite it as epsilon beta gamma lambda p gamma lambda p beta. So when you contract a spinner with itself, you always get zero. Right? So that's the, because of the anti anti symmetry and because this is uh, co commuting. These are commuting variables. And this is uh, this is actually um, different than for spinner field. If you if you Contract spinner field with itself. It's not zero because it's anti-commuting, but because for the for, for this for this uh, spinners uh, where commuting variables, yeah, this uh, this kind of uh, so this PP is zero. Yeah, so it's all and the same the same uh, uh, the same token. Yeah, you you will get that P sigma times lambda twiddle P is equal to zero. Yeah, so this are some. Uh, uh, last thing is uh, that uh, might be useful at uh, some point, yeah, is that what what happens if we flip the momentum, yeah? So if we if we go with p, p goes to minus p. So how this how the um, spinners for minus p are related to spinners with p? You see that that's uh, we have to flip. Uh, have, so we have to flip also. We have to rephrase, yeah, this two somehow that the sign flips, yeah. So Uh, or can write maybe let's write it explicitly. P, uh, p sigma is equal to lambda p lambda twiddle p p minus p sigma is to, to lambda minus p lambda twiddle minus p. So uh, you can you can choose the convention. This will be true if you choose the convention lambda minus p is equal to minus lambda p and lambda twiddle p. Minus p is equal to lambda twiddle p. So my convention is yeah that you flip the sign of untwiddled spinners and you don't flip the sign of twiddled spinners. But you could have a different. You could have an opposite convention, of course, or you could have uh, a convention that they mul multiply by i. Yeah, when 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 you when you when you, uh, uh, when you change sign. Yeah, so there is a lot of uh, lot of possibilities here. Okay, so now we come to the so, so after this formalism, yeah, we come to the center, yeah, of uh, this affair, yeah. What is uh, why do we want to why why I, why I wanted to introduce this uh, spinors, yeah? Why why I'm not happy yeah, with with momenta, and the thing is that spinors they carry information about the little group, yeah. So now if you take the 
so we have, let's write it again, P, P sigma is equal to lambda e, lambda e twiddle. So now if we make this transformation, that lambda e goes to z e lambda e, and lambda e twiddle goes to z e lambda e twiddle, nothing changes, yeah? So uh, this is not a unique decomposition, yeah? You can uh, multiply each spinner, a spinner, untwiddled spinner, yeah, by a, by a, by a number, and then uh, the twiddled spinner you by, by its inverse, and uh, this this doesn't change, yeah. So you have this arbitrariness in this decomposition, and this arbitrariness is very important, yeah. So so this corresponds. So if you if the momenta are real, yeah, this has to be a phase, yeah, because uh, this has to be uh, conjugate. And then, so this is a U1 transformation, yeah, that under which the momenta are, do not change. Some, this, this kind of transformation is called the little group. Yeah? So uh, for massless particles, yeah, the little group is U1. Yeah? I actually lied here uh, in this uh, sentence. Yeah? The, the real statement is that for massless particles, the, the little group is uh, uh, U1 times uh, uh, translation in a two-dimensional plane, but uh, this translation, they act trivially on all physical states that we know of. Yeah? So, uh, we forget about it, and you can shorten this, yeah, to say that uh, u1, little, that, that u1, the little group, corresponds to massless, massless particles. So that means that every state should transform under the little group, and this is how you define helicity of a massless particle. Helicity is uh, how the state transforms under the little group. So, in particular, yeah, when you calculate uh, the amplitude now, um, you will have Let's say we, we consider the amplitude, yeah, with n particles, oh. and uh, in this business, yeah. So usually you deal with uh, so to make things simpler, you deal with amplitudes where, or you, you try to work with amplitudes where all particles are incoming or all particles are outgoing. Yeah. So this means that uh, this is an amplitude with n incoming uh, particles. Uh, some so yeah sometimes some sometimes you see you'll see in some some uh, lectures the uh, amplitude with all outgoing particles yeah so this is like the difference between the uh, metric signatures yeah it's very pesky yeah, the, but yeah it's it's, it's it's all the same thing um, but yeah so this is the so 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 for simplicity yeah to not to, not to trace who is incoming, who is outgoing, everybody is incoming, yeah, and then we'll go uh, obtain amplitude with outgoing particles by crossing, yeah, so, but that's the, that's, the, that's, that's uh, later. And if you do, do this now, this transformation, uh, so this is the helicity of the particle, you, uh, the, uh, under this transformation, yeah, the, uh, The amplitude must transform as times m one h one and the same n h n. So the uh, the uh, transformation under under u one little group determines the helicity of uh, of the particle. So just to give you an example, so if you have an amplitude like uh, one two, three, four, yeah, with four particles and has this form lambda one, lambda two, or let's let's call it, let's use this one, two, three, four. So this is a untwiddled spinner, yeah, so it will uh, transform as uh, z minus one under this little, uh, under, so z one minus one, so it will be this will transform as z1 minus 1, z2 minus 1, z3, z4. Yeah, and that's the same thing. Which means that uh, this amplitude describes uh, uh, four uh, spin one half particles, but with the uh, first two have helicity minus one half, and the last two have helicity uh, plus one half. Um, so, you see, so this this is a little bit a different perspective than maybe what you're used to in in QFT. I will, don't talk about helicity amplitudes in Q in the standard QFT courses. This some information about the helicity is always uh, hidden. Yeah, when you talk about amplitudes, yeah, there is a particle that is, there are particles coming, incoming, outgoing, and they can have any helicities. Yeah, so that's, 
So what is the relation between the two? It's, it's, just, this, it's just this fact that when you calculate the amplitude, uh, yeah, you, it will be always for each uh, external particle. Yeah, it will be. Uh, it will be contracted. Yeah, for example, if you have a vector here, it will be contracted with a polarization vector for this. Yeah, and this polarization vector actually carries the little group weight, depending on whether it's a minus polarization vector or plus polarization vector. You will see this uh, polarization vectors soon. Uh, or for sp yeah, for scalars, we don't have we don't have any uh, weight, so 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 there is no uh, you don't have to do uh, add any polarization vectors. And then for spin one half fermions, yeah, you're using this. Uh, uh, so for so so the amplitude. Uh, so for each external particle, you will put some sort of like a x or or y bar uh, uh, so, um, polarization po uh, polarization uh, spinner here. And this polarization spinner carries also the, the groups in this. And actually, these these things are the same. Yeah. So you you think you never seen spinners, but of course, if you did any any Calculations, yeah, with spin one half fermions, this uh, polarization uh, spinners, yeah, or the in the Dirac notation that would be U, uh, they carry um, helicity information, and uh, x is just the same as lambda, and y bar is the same as lambda twiddle. There is, this is just, a, or more, maybe more more precisely, sorry, x for the minus helicity is lambda, and y bar for the plus helicity is lambda twiddle. And then uh, you can show that for massless particles, x for plus helicity is zero, and y, y bar for the minus helicity is zero. So actually, there are only these two. Yeah. So it's it's all uh, falls into place. Yeah. So uh, so so just to go back here, this 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 uh, spinors. Yeah, is nothing like the as as the polarization spinors that you're using in the, uh, when when computing amplitudes uh, for uh, uh, using using the usual Feynman rules. Yeah? So there's nothing. Um, good. Okay, so now we want to go. Uh, now, now there will be something uh, less trivial. Uh, is uh, any questions uh, until now? Please. No, I just write, just wrote it like, uh, as an example, yeah, this, of this amplitude. This, uh, just, just uh, you. So what, the point here is that when you look at the amplitude written in this way, you see what is the helicity part of particles that uh, uh, that uh, correspond to this amplitude. Yeah. So. Oh. So I'm not sure if I understand uh, what's uh, the question. So I, I did this transformation, yeah, on each of this uh, part of this of the sp spinners here, and then I got z1 minus one, z2 minus one, z2. Z yes. So these are helicities, yeah, of the particles, yeah. So this hel helicities of the particles they take uh, two values for the massless particle, yeah. If you have a uh, uh, spin one half fermion, there will be plus one, one half or minus one half. If it's a vector like photon, it will be plus one or minus one. If it's a graviton, it will be plus two or minus two, yeah. And so, okay, thanks. Good. So the non-trivial thing is that, uh, yeah. So that down now it's just. Uh, uh, Different different notation, and now this the the, the power of this notation is uh, you you'll see in, in a second. Yeah, when we want to define three point amplitudes. Yeah, so there, there will be amplitudes three three uh, ampl amplitude story with three particles on shell. So two two three uh, three incoming particles, all of them massless, all of them on shell. Yeah, and we want to uh, define this 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 kind of thing. So um, you see we have P1 plus P2 plus P3 is equal to zero, yeah, because we have uh, three incoming um, uh, momenta, and also P1 squared equals P2 squared is equal to uh, to uh, zero. So this is a very particular kinematics because when you uh, 
you see that we can write that P1 is minus, uh, minus P2 minus P3. So P1 squared is equal to P2, P2 plus P3 squared is equal to 2 P2 P3. Right? That's, a, that's a simple thing. But this is equal to 0. Yeah? So for this kinematics, there is no, uh, for the three point kinematics, yeah, all the uh, invariants or the usual invariants vanish. Yeah? So we have P1, P2 is equal to P2, P3 it is equal to P3, P1 is equal to 0 for the onshore kinematics. That's why normally you don't talk about it yeah, in, the, in the usual uh, QFT courses, yeah, because uh, uh, you cannot write anything yeah, Lorentz invariant, it seems. Uh, but uh, there is so 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 in the but in the language of spinors, yeah, this becomes less trivial, yeah, because now it means that lambda j lambda ki times lambda j, oh maybe let me just write it like this jk times jk is equal to zero, yeah, where jk is one to three. And you actually have to, uh, now, now you actually can uh, write some Lorentz, uh, so you can say that this is zero because square brackets are equal to zero, all the square brackets are equal to zero, but this mo can be still non-zero. Of course, this is possible only for complex momenta, so you have to go to complex kinematics to define three-point on-shell amplitude. So this is like a, where you have to do this leap of faith, yeah, you leave a little bit the, the real world, yeah, and uh, for the, the so to, to define things at the, at the three-point uh, level, yeah, you have to introduce this uh, complex momentum. But I mean, philosophically, it's not much different when you for, when you work with the usual QFT and you you introduce virtual particles. Yeah, virtual particles also don't exist. Yeah, they're just like complex momenta. Yeah, so these are like uh, some concepts. Yeah, that you just introduce. Yeah, as a prop and not they are they don't correspond to uh, to any reality. So uh, you can so. Uh, uh, we will just try to swallow this complex momenta, yeah, and then uh, that you have to, they have to appear, yeah, in this intermediate stage, yeah, and, uh, but, yeah, they, of course, yeah, once you go uh, to higher point amplitudes, yeah, you can, uh, you can leave the complex. Okay, and now, so, so you can actually have two more, two, two, two choices, yeah, you can choose so-called holomorphic kinematics, I, I will call it just H, uh, in, in the holomorphic kinematics, jk is equal to zero, and jk, uh, the, twi the, the untwiddled can be, can be non-zero, and anti-holomorphic kinematics is uh, opposite, jk equals to zero, and jk equals to zero. Note that there is nothing, um, uh, intermediate here. There's nothing in between, because uh, if you uh, if you, uh, you you can show yeah that if uh, lambda one lam if 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 you for example have uh, let's say uh, one two equals to zero yeah it follows that also uh, two three uh, and uh, one three have to be equal to zero. And, uh, so this follows from the fact that. Uh, uh, this means that that lambda two twiddle is proportional to lambda two one twiddle, and then from conservation of momentum, you will also find that uh, lambda three has to be, be be proportional to this. Yeah, so there is only these two discrete choices: holomorphic kinematics and anti-holomorphic kinematics. And then for each kinematics, maybe I will just write it somewhere where I can keep it uh, forever. Uh, maybe I write it on this uh, um, uh, blackboard here. I guess this can be. Yep. Yeah. But this is. Uh, yeah, you have correct little group transformations, yeah, because uh, so the momentum doesn't transform on the little group, yes? So you, you're protesting against this that Pj uh, times Pk 
actually with two is equal to jk kj. This is the, the formula. Huh? So you can write it as lambda j, sorry, lambda j, lambda k, lambda k, lambda j, and you see that the under little group this transforms as one over z, yeah, but this this the other that transforms as z. So this 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 doesn't transform under little group. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, it will it will in a second. So so now I'm 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 uh, writing down, yeah. So the point is that uh, why you it's nice to work with this um, uh, three point amplitude because once you know the helicities of the particles involved, there's a unique uh, uh, unique formula, unique uh, expression that is consistent with little group scaling. And this expression is for the holomorphic kinematics. I will just write it down and then we'll check that it's correct. So 1 h1, 2 h2, 3 h3 is equal to uh, like some coupling constant 1 2 to the power of h3 minus h1 minus h2, 2, 3 to the power of h1 minus h2 minus h3, and then 3, 1 to the power of h2 minus h1 minus h3. And then this, for the anti-holomorphic kinematics, so for the holomorphic kinematics we have only uh, angle brackets or the untwiddled spinners, so we can only use those. And for the holom anti holomorphic kinematics, we can uh, use 2 h2 3 h3 is equal to g, and then the same thing but upside down 2 3 h2 plus h3 minus h1, and then 3 1 h1 plus h3 minus h2. Yeah, so there is a unique expression. So that's, let's just look, uh, hope, hopefully it will work, scaling under, uh, under the little group scaling of the first particle. So here you will get um, z1 uh, uh, to the power of h3 minus h1 minus h2. And then from here you will get z1 to the power of h2 minus h1 minus h3. So h3 cancels here, h2 cancels here, and then you're getting that it scales under z1 as minus 2h1 as it should, yeah, for the uh, um, Minus. Where did I get minus? Uh, they write it upside down, or I think it's okay. Uh, so you you get you, you it scales yeah under under that one as uh, minus two 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 h one okay. Uh, Uh, yeah, sorry, yeah, yes. So minus one, so we have to put the minuses everywhere, yeah, and minuses everywhere, and then we'll get the correct results. Good, thanks. And yeah, the, the same thing, yeah, you will get uh, uh, here. Yeah, so so you can do this exercise, yeah, for every, every other uh, uh, particle, yeah, and you will get the, the uh, correct scaling. So there is only one way, yeah, you can write a three-point amplitude for a given uh, set of the three, three masses particle. Okay, so now maybe some examples, yeah, so uh, how this amplitude would look in specific theory. So let's pick some simple theory to have, uh, to see what happens. Okay. 
So, like, what, what, what is the simplest theory you can write? Let's take uh, effect EFT of gravity, yeah? So, GR EFT. Uh, there is nothing simpler than that, yeah? So, um, the, let's, say, let's take holomorphic kinematics, yeah? And uh, what would be... Uh, and just ap apply this formula, yeah? My, uh, and then write this. Let's try to first like this. Th amplitude with three minuses. So we have a three minuses, it's always uh, um, minus two plus two plus two. So this would be, uh, for each case, yeah, it would be one, two, two, three, uh, three, one squared. And then we have some arbitrary constant yeah, that doesn't scale uh, under under the little group. Yeah. Uh, you see, uh, so, the, so this constant, yeah, this is really a constant. It can't depend on any momenta, yeah, uh, because there is no no momentum invariance here. Yeah, you, yeah, you, we cannot. We, we already used the the, uh, the spinors. Uh, if we try to use the spinors again, we have to compensate. Yeah, with some uh, with uh, other, we would have to compensate them, but we don't have anything. Uh, so this is really like a coupling constant. Yeah, so there is nothing. There, there cannot be any momentum dependence here. Good. So uh, for the holomorphic kinematics, second tech, let's continue. One minus two minus uh, three plus, and then let's apply, apl let's apply it, yeah, and then we'll get one, two. So what will be the power here? Um, H3 is plus, so this is two, and then two, two plus two plus two. So this is to the power of six, and then you can uh, guess. Uh, there's some con uh, constant, and then you can uh, see that this should be over one three squared to three squared. Yeah. So let's see that this this is correct. Yeah. So if and again the scaling under one. Yeah. So 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 we have six until untwiddled uh, spinors lambda one in the numerator and two in the denominator. So this whole thing is proportional to the lambda one to the fourth. So that's okay. Yeah. So we have four. You, you have to have one spinor for each helicity half, yeah. So for for uh, graviton, yeah, you have you the, the you have to have lambda one to the fourth, and also you have to have lambda two to the fourth, you know, and it's the same. On the other hand, the three only appears in the denominator, yeah. So you have uh, one over lambda three to the fourth, yeah. So you're getting the correct scaling, yeah, for each of this of these amplitudes. Yes, uh, squ squirts, yeah. Thanks. Uh, one, two, two, three, three, one, yeah, and uh, yeah. Yeah, in this case, yeah, the uh, the little group scaling is more obvious, yeah, it's just, all, it's, there's always four uh, untwiddled spinors, yeah, for each uh, each particle. And then uh, M, uh, one minus two plus three plus would be kappa twiddle, and then it will be the other way around. Uh, no, so, sorry. I have to have. Uh, have to I would have to divide it here. Three, six, one, uh, two squared. One three squared, and then m one minus one plus two plus three plus would be c twiddle uh, over one two squared two three squared. Three one squared. Okay. So you see, uh, yeah, we have we have this. This is the only possible expressions, yeah, that are consistent with uh, with little group scaling. So for 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 interactions, so onshore interactions of three uh, gravitons. Uh, and now maybe it's, it's worth to see what is the what are actually the dimensions of these couplings. So this cup this coupling maybe st let's start. So the amplitude three point amplitude should be have a dimension mass. Uh, each spinor contraction like that has dimension mass, so this is uh, this is uh, mass to the to squared. So we conclude that dimension of kappa is one over mass. Oh. Um, on the other hand, uh, here, yeah, we we we, we need uh, something more dramatic. So dimension of c has to be one over mass to the five. And here uh, we have. Uh, Kappa has 
dimension of mass cube and uh, C twiddle has the dimension of mass to the seven. Okay. So now, um, you know, when, when you remember when we were discussing, we were discussing GREFT, we were saying that yeah, the, from the uh, R term yeah, in the Lagrangian, you're getting something that is dH squared H over M Planck. You know? So the uh, three-point amplitude, or uh, so, so there is a three-point vertex that goes like one over M Planck. So this looks like this uh, by dimension analysis. So uh, this kappa must be proportional to one over M Planck. So the mean, it means that this interaction is just the usual interaction in Einstein and GR. This, this is just a standard uh, interaction. Or, I mean, I call it three point uh, interaction, but yeah, this is a three, on shell three point amplitude. Uh, on the other hand, what uh, we also say that uh, we also noticed, yeah, that when we add this C cube where C mu nu rho sigma cube operator, yeah, to the GREFT Lagrangian, the Wilson coefficients of this guy, yeah, is one over lambda squared, and then uh, this leads to, this was leading to a uh, vertex, yeah, of H cube derivative to the six, yeah? And then it was divided by M Planck cube and uh, C, yeah? So, uh, okay, maybe let's, so it's, okay, so, okay, so this is the Wilson coefficient, I will call it C6, C6. So, you see that this, uh, C uh, is consistent, yeah, with being proportional to C6 over M Planck squared. When I say consistent, I mean it's dimensional, it has the same dimension. So this interaction is non-minimal interaction in GR. So now we, we see uh, how the EFT appears here already. Yeah? So we have a Minimal interaction is here in the amplitude with uh, this helicity, and in the amplitude with another helicity, another helicity configuration, we recover the uh, lowest order correction to the uh, to the Einstein GR, the lowest order G EFT correction to the Einstein GR. So we have these two interactions. What about this? Uh, this we have a mass to the mass cube and mass to the seven. Yeah, what kind of uh, so we would have to have a uh, interaction, yeah, with three uh, gravitons, and then uh, multiplied by by uh, some, for example, by kappa twiddle, which has dimension mass to the three. This has mass to the six, yes. Yeah? So we would have to. The only way to to make it dimensionally work, we would have to put two derivatives in the denominator. But this, of course, we don't do, yeah. So this. Uh, this is a non-local interaction yeah, in the standard parlance. So you see that this kind of thing, of course, this is consistent with the little group, but it corresponds to the non-local interaction. And we don't want it, yeah, if we if we put it in the in our theory, we'll get all sort of nonsense. Yeah. So um, this has to be zero. The only way that this is consistent with little group scaling, it's when it's zero. And of course, even more for this interaction, yeah, because this has even ma larger dimension, dimensionality of the coupling. So this has to be zero. So for the holomorphic kinematics, we, we should have just two amplitudes. Uh, the uh, the, uh, uh, the, one, the the one here, which can call it MHV amplitude, yeah, with minimally helicity evaluating, or, or just the. Uh, minimal um, minimal three point amplitude, yeah, which comes from Einstein gravity, and then the non minimal one, which comes from uh, dimension six operator in the GREFT Lagrangian, and this uh, mining has to be zero. So uh, you can do the same discussion, yeah, for anti holomorphic kinematics, and then you will find, and by the same discussion, you will you will find that one plus two plus Three plus is equal to zero, is and the same one m, no, one. So for the antihalomorphic, this one is zero. Okay, one uh, minus two minus three plus, and then you will find that well, one plus 
2 plus 3 minus, yeah, is uh, equal to kappa. Uh, now we just replace uh, brackets, yeah, with uh, uh, the angle brackets with the square brackets, and then you have m. 1 plus uh, 2 plus 3 plus is equal to, uh, I don't know, I, I, I'm back. let's call it d, 1, 2 squared, 2, 3 squared, 3, 1 squared. Yeah? This is the uh, amplitude for the antimolar holomorphic kinematics. So all in all, we have uh, four distinct amplitudes. You can actually show, so this is something I will not be showing, but that uh, um, the crossing symmetry requires yeah, that this coefficient is the, is the same. Uh, it can, it, it, they are not independent. On the other hand, this can be different. If they are the same, this corresponds to a parity invariant theory. So that's, uh, remember that we had two operators at dimension, say, 6 in GREFT, and that uh, one of them was CP conserving, the other was uh, CP violating. So for the CP conserving case, we will get this guy, this guy, uh, uh, this guy, and this guy equal, and uh, for the CP violating case, they will be, uh, they will have an opposite sign and the uh, and the uh, imaginary part. That's 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 what will happen. So of course, I I am not proving this. Yeah, I'm just saying what happens. Yeah, but yeah, there is there is this. Okay. So all in all, you see that uh, this seems to be a. Uh, a, a, the, the, the EFT already emerges, yeah, that, that, at this uh, three-point level, yeah, you're getting all the all the um, the uh, 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 leading order interactions in GFT. They they show up there, yeah, and uh, so they can be so, so you can use this three-point amplitude as a building blocks your, of your theory, and then uh, bootstrap them to. Uh, uh, higher point scattering amplitudes. How you bootstrap them? Yeah, I will of course talk in a in a in a, in a second. Yeah, about it. Okay. Uh, so let let me let me uh, ah, and then also you should um, you should maybe appreciate. Yeah. So all the Einstein gravity, all this pure Einstein gravity. Let's say. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, what's the question? The question. Yeah, I mean you can, yeah. So that you can, but you then you would have to write um, f uh, four four point amplitudes. You have to bootstrap them to four point amplitudes, and then you see that the four point amplitude that you're obtaining, yeah, they uh, will be at odds with locality. Yeah, so they will contain some poles that are not single poles. Yeah, and then uh, this this kind of so so you you can argue uh, this way. Yeah, this is this is how it's usually argued actually. You will get a non simple so, so you say that unitarity, yeah, if, if, if this is non-zero, then unitarity in factorization yeah, will uh, force you to have a four-point amplitude with uh, non-simple uh, non poles. Yeah? So with something that is like, oh yes, like goes, let's say, just one over S squared. Yeah? And that is, of course, that is, uh, that is wrong, that is uh, inconsistent with locality. Yeah? So, so locality unitarity yeah, forces this to be zero without talking about Lagrangian. Yeah, but I have a usually I have a bit different philosophy as you should, maybe you'll see after after the break. Yeah, that uh, the uh, I, I actually think more more. I'm not trying to really to define everything from on shell. Yeah, that is this is the most fundamental definition of QFT. I'm usually usually using the, this on shell as a prop. Yeah, as so some formalism that exists in parallel to the usual QFT, and I often go from one to the other. Yeah, so that's the that I have a more pragmatic approach to that. So um, good. Okay. So what about a break now? Yeah. So you can you can. Uh, the digest, yeah, and uh, I will go to um, study in more, a bit more detail, yeah, another EFT, uh, which will be Young Mills EFT, yeah. So, okay, so we we restart. Uh, so let me move to another EFT now, yeah, to to, to discuss another EFT in the onshell language, yeah, and. Uh, 
uh, this is the so-called Young Mills EFT. So you have a Young Mills theory here in contained in this uh, kinetic term. Yeah, this is in general non-abelian uh, uh, EFT. And then you can add a dimension six uh, term uh, uh, to this, and then a series of higher dimensional terms that I won't be, I won't be uh, uh, writing explicitly. There is another dimension six terms yeah, where you can put a twiddle on one of the Gs, yeah, but uh, yeah, let me not put it here just to have a shorter uh, formula. It's, if you're interested, it's in the notes. So maybe let's go the other direction here. Yeah? So how this uh, yeah, means how you can connect it to the onshell language. Yeah? So, uh, you can co you can calculate yeah the uh, sim you can simply calculate the three point amplitude yeah using the usual Feynman rules yeah so I don't yet write helicities yeah because I will be uh, in I G F A B C A mu one A mu two uh, row three yeah and then there is an expression yeah that you can uh, uh, derive. Uh, uh, at, like, okay, maybe let's do it like this. Uh, FABC. Uh -huh. And uh, let's open the, the first bracket. No. Eta mu nu P1 minus P2 rho plus eta nu rho P2 minus P3 mu plus eta rho mu p3 minus p1 mu and uh, then there will be a, uh, another term that is 6 i c c g uh, blah, blah, blah. and then i will write here okay, p1 rho p2 mu p p3 mu minus p1 nu p2 rho p3 mu uh, plus dots okay so what i did yeah i just wrote the usual like uh, feynman rule yeah that follows so so this this lagrangian contains cubic uh, gluon interactions this first is the usual Feynman rule for the Young Mills theory, and then this guy yeah, corrects uh, corrects this Feynman rules by this uh, higher dimensional uh, term. Yeah? So, it's, so you see that it has three gluon fields, yeah? so it contains three uh, three three gluon vertex in addition, of course, to other uh, vertices. Um, the uh, this this is a bit longer, yeah, but all the other terms that you get uh, from this uh, Feynman rule will contain. Uh, some uh, p1 or p2 or or other contractions yeah so and these are zero on shell so we are not interested in them so this is this is nice uh, these are the polarization vectors yeah so we have three incoming uh, polarization vectors yeah for the the gluons and now the trick will be to actually go to the onshell is to write this uh, uh, polarization vectors in the onshell friendly language yeah so we can write them uh, like that e mu uh, for the minus helicity, yeah, it's a, uh, so, so one minus, yeah, it will be this uh, lambda i sigma bar you know, sigma mu theta square root of two lambda i twiddle theta twiddle and e mu i plus is equal to lambda i sigma no, zeta sigma mu lambda i twiddle over square root of two lambda i theta. Okay. So this is the so, so now you see that this v v this is a massless polarization vector. Uh, this can be written yeah in the in terms of the of the spinors. You see that it has uh, the correct weight, yeah. So this has weight. Uh, uh, this has weight, yeah, uh, minus two, yeah, under this transformation, and this has weight uh, uh, plus two under little group transformations, yeah. So it just differs, yeah, that this has a untwiddled spinner in the numerator and twiddled in the denominator, and this has the other way around. You can convince yourself, uh, okay, and then zeta is an arbitrary, arbitrary reference spinner. 
Uh, theta is uh, the only thing that we require about this reference spinner is that it's not that it's not zero here. That this contraction is not zero. Yeah, because otherwise it wouldn't make sense. But uh, this, uh, so otherwise the zeta is ar arbitrary, and this is nothing but the uh, gauge. Uh, this is nothing but the gauge uh, uh, transform. So the the arbitrariness to, to choose zeta is just the arbitrariness to 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 to, to the change under of the of the polarization vector under gauge transformations. Yeah, so, I mean, I, of course, I'm not proving all of this, yeah, but this is the same object that, that you've been working with, just written in, the, in different variables. Sigma uh, mu. And then we have this. Okay. Um, good. So, now we just have to plug it in, yeah, and uh, calculate. Uh, maybe let's do... Uh, let's do the simpler things first. So let's calculate M. Just do like a single calculation. Yeah, with, uh, uh, what would be this? M1 minus 2B minus 3C minus. Yeah? So we have to put three of these uh, guys uh, here. Um, and then uh, you can convince yourself quite quickly yeah, that this first term, this usual Young Mills term, will not contribute to this uh, three minus amplitude. The reason is that it's, uh, this, this vertex contains the etas, and then if you uh, you can prove yeah, that uh, uh, maybe here yeah, that uh, e mu minus e mu minus is equal to uh, zero yeah, for any any pair of uh, or you, you can choose it to be zero. So the the reason the, the, the way how to, how you quickly do it is yeah we can choose. So actually this this uh, this uh, reference spinner can be different yeah for different uh, uh, mu. But let's choose it to be the same yeah we we, we have we, we we can we can do it uh, just for the for the for, for simplicity of the argument. And then lambda for example let's calculate lambda one sigma mu uh, theta. Lambda two, sigma mu, theta. Um, so if, if if we do this contraction, you see that. Uh, so so then we can use something that is called Fields identity. So if you have a contraction here of sigma mu, you can rewrite it as minus two, lambda one, lambda two, theta, beta, and theta zeta is zero huh? because this is a contraction of the same spinner. So this is zero. Um, so, uh, yeah, so now actually this choosing the zeta to be the same is not really constraining. Uh, it's, not, it's not actually a, an, a, an assumption here, yeah, because uh, there's in fact only up to scaling, yeah, there is only one zeta that, that you can choose to be orthogonal to, to this one. And all of uh, all of these guys yeah, are uh, yeah, will be okay, proportional to each other in uh, in, the, in the given kinematics. Anyway, uh, so let's let's uh, let's plug it. Let's uh, uh, just not look at this first term. Let's look at the second term. So we will have six i c g uh, f a b c. Yeah, and then we have a contraction, yeah, of uh, of uh, this epsilon vectors, yeah, with different, uh, yeah. So we have uh, epsilon one, p two. Uh, yes, wait, wait. So, so sorry, epsilon one, yeah, p two, epsilon two, p one, and this min minus minus and epsilon three. Not impossible. Uh, mu p2, yeah, one p2, uh, mu p3, epsilon 3 p1. Okay, and then uh, minus uh, epsilon 1 p3, epsilon 2 p1, epsilon 3 p2. Yeah. And always minus. Okay, so we, let's just write what it is. This is six i c g f a b c, and uh, then we will have uh, two square root of two from this normalization, and then we'll have the uh, angle brackets, yeah, uh, one theta 
2 zeta and 3 zeta. And the most difficult thing in this calculation will be actually to uh, uh, differentiate 3 from zeta. Yeah? So, so I don't know how to do it, but yes, I'll try to work, uh, put the uh, longer tail yeah, for, the, for, the, for my zeta. Um, good. Uh, we are already on the next page. Yeah? Um, uh, good. So uh, we are here at uh, open, and then we have to do this this contraction. So we have uh, lambda one p two sigma uh, zeta twiddle, lambda two p three sigma zeta twiddle, and lambda three p one sigma zeta twiddle minus lambda one p three sigma zeta twiddle, lambda two. P1 sigma zeta twiddle lambda 3 P2 sigma zeta twiddle. Yeah, so this is just a contraction of momenta with uh, this. Yeah, so I just put this momenta inside. Yeah, and I did it for a reason. Yeah, so this is, I, I'm not touching the, the first part. And then now I will write it. So P, I, I, I'll just use this uh, basic formula that P sigma is lambda P, lambda P twiddle, yeah? And then this lambda p is contracts to the left, and this lambda p twiddle con 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 contracts to the right. So we are getting, we'll be having the like, one, two, two, zeta. Two, three, three, zeta. <sighs> Angle bracket. Back is that. Uh, 3, 1, 1, zeta. Uh, minus 1, 3, 3, zeta. 2, 1, 1, zeta. Uh, 3, 2, 2, zeta. Okay. And uh, do you see, uh, so you can see that I think these two terms are actually the same. They only differ, but that this one, for example, has one, two, and this has two, one. But two, one is minus one, two, yeah? So, and then the same is two, three, three, two. So I'm using, I will be using that uh, ij is equal to minus ji. Oh. Maybe let's write it JK so that it's more visible. Uh, this terms with Z are the same in both terms. So this is just the two, two, two of the same terms. And so we're getting factor of two uh, here. Which cancels with the factor of two that is there, and now we can see that also all this uh, gauge dependence will cancel, yeah, between uh, what is in the big square bracket and what is in the denominator, yeah, because each of these terms has one xi, two xi, three xi, and that's what you also have in the denominator. So, all in all, you're getting three square root of two c. Uh, how do we define it? So it should be C, CG, right? so this is CG uh, and FABC. And uh, I am left with 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 1. And that's my expression yeah, for the amplitude, yeah, 1 minus 2B minus 3C minus. So little, always at the end, the calculation check yeah, if the little group uh, invariance is there, yeah. I mean, the little group covariance is there, yeah. So we have two ones, two twos, and two threes, yeah. All uh, angle brackets, so this is all untwiddled spinners, yeah. So this works, uh, and so this is the correct expression. You also check that the dimensions work. So CG uh, is the dimension one over mass squared, and then you get three dimensions of masses from this. So dimension of the whole thing is mass, yeah. That success. So you, you can see that. 
uh, for example, this term cannot contribute here just for dimensional reasons, yeah, because only has only dimensionless coupling, so there's no way uh, it could give you the correct little group structure uh, with a dimensionless coupling, yeah. So that's the, the, there's no way this, this this term could contribute for to this uh, uh, to this amplitude. And then you can do the same calculation for uh, uh, for uh, the for other amplitudes. Uh, so uh, let me not uh, go through this, yeah, but uh, one a minus two b minus. I, I mean, I will only sketch how how this goes uh, with one one important step. So where is that here? Um, so. The difference is that in these calculations, you have to plug uh, two polarization vector with a minus uh, helicity and one polarization vector with a plus helicity. Uh, so it will be the, the, the calculation will be different. And then, in actual, you can show that this term doesn't contribute, and but this term contributes. And after a little bit, yeah, of like half a page of calculation, yeah, which you find also uh, in the notes, you get something like e g square root two. F A B C one two three theta over one theta two theta and that's squared. And again, check. Let's check that the uh, things that this uh, uh, this uh, little group weights are correct, so we have uh, uh, one, and then so we have angle bracket for one here, and uh, uh, square bracket here in the denominator, so it's a twiddle, it's untwiddle, twiddle, so it's okay. For the same for two, and then three has uh, two untwiddled spinners here, and it works. And then you see that this gauge parameter doesn't, I mean, the weight. Whatever weights it has, it cancels here, yeah, because it's always so. It it cannot have uh, any hanging weight, yeah. So, uh, so now it looks like th in this case we got a gauge invariant answer, but now let's use uh, our kinematics, yeah. So we go, we we can. So this is actually true. This expression is true in both kinematics, independently of the whether it's uh, holomorphic or anti-holomorphic kinematics. If we choose anti-holomorphic kinematics, then this is just zero because it's proportional to one, two. So this, all these angle brackets vanish. On the other hand, if we choose uh, holomorphic kinematics, yeah, then this is, has a chance to be non-zero. And that you can prove very, very simply yeah, that okay, we have lambda one, lambda uh, the, the momentum conservation is this. All right. So now we. Uh, we can, for example, multiply from the left by lambda 1. So if we multiply from the left by lambda 1 and from the right by, by zeta, then we get that 1, 2, 2 zeta plus 1, 3 plus 3 zeta is equal to uh, 0. So, which means that the ratio to zeta over three zeta is equal to minus uh, one three over one two. And of course, this is last step. Uh, wait, I'm so sorry. I'm, I got the, I got the, the brackets wrong. So I'm in a holomorphic kinematic. So I mean, it's, it's, it was also true, but that's not what I wanted. I wanted just to show this uh, this expression. I mean, both both ex uh, so, no, just got once again. Uh, we're getting multiplied by one, and we're getting one two two zeta. So angle bracket square bracket plus one three three and square bracket three zeta and then we're getting the expression that uh, two zeta over no actually three zeta over two zeta 
is equal to uh, 1, 2 over 1, 3 with a minus sign. Make sense? So, uh, I'm saying, saying so, so this, uh, this is true. Uh, this is true independent of the kinematics. It's just moment of conservation. This is still true independently of the kinematics. To divide by 1, 3, I have to assume that we are in the holomorphic kinematics where this is non zero. Yeah? And of course, uh, if you multiply by lambda 2 from the left, you're getting the same expression, but 3 zeta over 2 zeta is equal to uh, minus 2, 1 over. Two, three, which is equal to plus one, two over two, three. So we plug this in here. So we see that for the holomorphic kinematics, we can get rid of the gauge dependence, and we're getting a gauge independent vertex F A B C. Uh, in just with ABC, and then we have one, two to the power of three, because we have one from here, one from here, and then uh, this will change into plus, and then we'll have uh, one, three, two, three. So let us, yeah, so I just plugged in this expression, yeah, for the uh, zeta contraction uh, ratios, yeah, and then we have, we can write it at uh, m one a minus two b minus 3c plus is equal to, um, what, uh, where, where is this expression? ig square root of 2 uh, f a b c and then 1 2 cube over 1 3 2 3. Perfect. Yeah, so that's the, uh, again, you check the, at the end of the calculation, you check the weights, three weights of 1 here, one here, three weights of the two here, one here, okay, and then three is in the denominator, and again, uh, this is because it has a plus helicity. So you see that, yeah, you can calculate this uh, amplitude here yeah, from the Lagrangian. So this is not something mysterious, this is the same, this is equivalent yeah, to the Lagrangian formalism. You just calculate this amplitude on shell and you get this kind of uh, expressions, yeah, from uh, this. Um, yeah, and then you can uh, complete this calculation, yeah, and you will get. Uh, that so for the holomorphic kinematics, this is all. The rest must be zero, and for the anti-holomorphic kinematics, you will get also one a plus two b plus three c plus is equal to oh, this three uh, e square root of two c g f a b c, but the same thing, but with the uh, uh, square brackets and m one a plus two b plus three c minus will be the same again, but for b c, but the same, but with the square brackets. Yeah, but that's good. So these are this is the three point functions in the uh, Young Mills EFT. If you if you set this all minus and all plus to zero, you're getting the standard Young Mills. Yeah, so the, all the Young Mills uh, theory is contained in these two amplitudes, and all I mean all so all the information you, don't, you can calculate any observable in the Young Mills, or any perturbative observable in the Young Mills. You can calculate starting from this uh, simple three-point amplitude. It contains all the information you have to uh, reproduce the entire theory, and if you allow for this. All minus or a plus amplitude. You're away from Young Mills. You're uh, you're into Young Mills EFT, and then uh, things uh, things are a bit different, yeah, because uh, uh, that's not all the information about the EFT. Yeah, so this is only information yeah, about the two leading operators in the EFT. Somehow the information about the remaining operators must emerge somewhere else. But uh, uh, we'll we'll see we'll see how it goes. Okay. Yeah, so that's uh, three point uh, three point amplitudes in the Young Mills EFT. Good. 
So now, what do we do? So, so of course, these three-point amplitudes in the complex uh, momenta, yeah, this is uh, not something that is uh, perhaps the most uh, interesting observable. I mean, it's not observable at all. This is not something we we can extract any 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 observables. Oh, so we have to calculate something yeah, that is observable, like scattering amplitudes with at least uh, four particles involved. Yeah. So we want to we will we will want to calculate m one a two b three c four d. So uh, uh, probably I forgot to say it, yeah. But this a b c d yeah, is a color index, yeah. So it's just every particle has this uh, color label, yeah, and it has to be there. Uh, so this is how do we calculate this? So the, we we calculate this using unitarity, and the uh, the the basic. Um, formula that you use to calculate it is this. So it shows you that the discontinuity of an amplitude in the kinematic uh, variable, yeah, the, that is p alpha squared, is given by sum over all possible intermediate states with with the amplitudes yeah where this uh, intermediate states yeah, are 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 sandwiched between the alpha and beta this is the uh, uh so and this follows yeah from the s matrix unitarity and you also have to use uh, uh cpt yeah to to actually uh, derive this yeah but let's just, so. so now what happens if the intermediate state is one particle so if the intermediate state is one particle, yeah, then uh, this. Uh, so this is sorry. So this is the here we integrate over the phase space, yeah, of the intermediate particle. And uh, for for the one particle state, yeah, the the phase space would be this. So there is like overall conservation delta. Yeah, so this is a conservation of momentum. And this we. Integrate yeah over all possible uh, mom for momenta subject to the constraint that this particle is on shell. Yeah, this is the phase space. Yeah, so if you had uh, more particles, yeah, there will be more uh, momenta to integrate over. Yeah, and uh, each one constraint yeah for for each of these particles being on shell. Yeah, but for the moment we have only one uh, particle. So. Now this uh, uh, this you see you have a delta and you have an integration so you can get rid of this two so then you, this is just two pi delta k squared so you see that uh, if you uh, consider only one particle intermediate state then the discontinuity of m alpha beta is equal to i. Uh, 2 pi i delta k squared, and then times this amplitude. Sorry, squared is the wrong place. So, uh, how, the solution of that is is just that the um, as we approach uh, k squared going to zero the amplitude has to have this form. Minus one over uh, p k x, or uh, say p alpha squared. Oh. Yeah, so. So I write kx squared, yeah. So if I already committed here, uh, m alpha x, m x beta. And this is called factorization. So this is tree level factorization. That means that near the uh, poles, yeah, or that there is, uh, if there is an intermediate particle, yeah, that where these amplitudes are non zero, then you will have a pole corresponding to the tree level exchange of this particle. 
and the residue of this pole has to be given by the two amplitudes here, yeah, the product of the two amplitudes here yeah, for alpha x and x to beta. So you can, this is usually written as residue kx squared goes to zero is equal to minus m alpha x m x beta. And this minus is uh, my conventions, yeah. Uh, if you see some other papers, there will be one minus because they're using m is the same as i m. So it's like, uh, but conventions can be. Uh, sorry, sorry. This residue of m alpha to beta is equal to minus this. Okay, this is the. Is that uh, is that clear? What's happening here? So this is a. A bit looks like yeah, like doing Feynman diagrams, but it's not Feynman diagrams. Yeah, we don't calculate, we don't have any offshore objects here. Yeah, we only uh, we will be only dealing with the with onshell objects, and we will th this equation tells us that, that when you go uh, when you have non-zero amplitudes like that, you will have a pole in the amplitude. Yeah, with this residue, a simple pole. Yeah, so you can only have a simple pole and not. Uh, uh, Mm. Okay, so that's we we are here. Okay, and then I will be uh, I will be calculating. So I, I want to calculate what the the residue of this amplitude. Yeah, let me just uh, uh, quickly do this. Let me let me first calculate the residue. Uh, as s goes to zero of the all minus amplitude. So what would it be? Uh, okay. So maybe one thing I forgot to say that you have to sum here, yeah, over all intermediate states, yeah. So so this is this is uh, uh, important. So I have to. Sum over all intermediate states, so we do this, you know, you'll see what is there. And one a minus two b minus goes to I call it S A minus H, no H sorry, times M uh, S E H three C uh, minus four D minus. Yeah, so this is uh, this is the residue. Um, so uh, this, yeah. So I say we are dealing with only all incoming amplitudes, and this why I have I, here I have something outgoing. So I have to cross. When you cross a particle, but well, this is a bosonic particle, so that it's easier to cross. There is no signs involved. You have to change the momentum, flip the momentum, and flip the helicity. So we have sum over H E M one I minus two B minus minus S E minus H times M S E H three C minus four D minus. So now let's write it just as a sum over E. So uh, you see I'm summing yeah, over all possible helicities and all possible color yeah, of the simia because I have to sum over all in intermediate states. So now let's just write it uh, more. Clearly, one a minus two b minus and minus uh, s minus e times m s e plus three c minus four d minus and then the other helicity one minus two b minus minus s e plus um, as e minus three c minus four d minus. So now uh, this, this we, we have these two amplitudes. Now I have to um, I have to the, um, assign so which vertex or which of the which of the amplitudes will be calculated in the holomorphic kinematics and which will be expressed in the anti-holomorphic kinematics. So I cannot get both uh, in holomorphic and anti-holomorphic because, for example, if I if I if I want that these two are holomorphic, then I would have 
that lambda 1 is proportional to lambda 2 is proportional to lambda s, which is the same, which is up to the sign uh, lambda minus s. And th if this is holomorphic, oh, so, sorry, uh, the other way around. So if, if they are holomorphic, uh, that would mean that lambda, also that lambda 3 twiddle is proportional to lambda 4 twiddle is proportional to lambda s. So if both are written in the holomorphic kinematics, yeah, if I assign holomorphic kinematics here and here, I would get um, that all spinors has to be proportional to each other because this ensures yeah, that uh, 1, 2 is equal to 2s, 2 is equal to 1s, is equal to 0, and similarly for z. But then, because everyone is proportional to everyone, that means also that uh, 1, 3 and 1, 4 are 0, which means that p1, uh, p3 and p1, p4 four is 0. So if I assign holomorphic kinematics to everyone, this is possible only if all invariants are 0, but that's not an interesting uh, uh, corner. Yeah? So, uh, the only way yeah, is to to uh, have something non-trivial is to have holomorphic kinematics in one and anti-holomorphic in the other. But then you see that this uh, th this is zero because I look at my amplitudes, yeah, and for the holomorphic. Um, Uh, so, if I if I have a uh, for the anti-holomorphic kinematics, only plus 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 and plus plus minus are non-zero, and th this other has this two other have to be zero. So, wherever I put the anti-holomorphic kinematics, I will always have some zero. Is that clear? So this is zero. So the residue of this amplitude is zero. So we are uh, coming to a conclusion yeah, that. Uh, in this EFT, R residue as S goes to zero of M one A minus two B minus three C minus four D minus is equal to zero, and this is the same. I mean, the same discussion will be for t channels, so that we also can calculate there our t goes to zero and our uh, u goes to zero, yeah. And the difference will be yeah that we have to replace two and three and three and four, but this will change nothing because everybody has minus helicity, so it will be all the same configuration. So it means that this amplitude cannot have any poles at tree level. But it doesn't mean that, it's, so if you were, now if you work in uh, Young Mills, you would say that this amplitude is zero. If you work in uh, Young Mills EFT framework, is you say that this amplitude is a contact term. So this amplitude is not zero, but it's a contact term. So it's something with this four color indices that has a correct little group weight uh, and uh, that uh, doesn't have any pole. So, for example, if you if if our young Mills is U1, uh, which is a little bit like funny funny thing yeah to do yeah, but because then uh, this is not interacting and this is zero for for young Mills, but let's uh, for for U1, but let's uh, let's see what happens. You could write m1 minus two minus three minus four minus. I mean U1 case, so so. So it's a U1 Young Mills or U1 uh, theor gauge theory, and uh, so I don't have any color index, and then I can write the contact term like this. Oh, maybe let's write it. And some arbitrary. So this has correct little group weights. Again, yeah, we have two uh, untwiddled spinners, yeah, for each uh, particle. This combination is necessary because of Bose symmetry. Yeah, you, this, this could be Bose symmetric under the interchange of all particles, and this this is the combination that satisfies. There is only one possibility. Yeah, how how I can write it. Uh, 
There's only one combination that is both asymmetric. And what will be the dimensions of this? So the four-point amplitude has dimension zero. So this has dimension uh, mass squared, mass squared, so mass to the fourth. So the dimension of C here is the dimension of one m mass to the fourth. So what happened here is we got a dimension eight operator appeared here. Uh, and this is the general thing, yeah, that the uh, higher dimension, op or sometimes it's, it could be also dimension six operators, yeah, but in general, higher dimension operators, they appear as contact terms in the higher point amplitudes. So this is how, uh, how this on-shell uh, uh, on um, uh, framework, how this connects to EFTs. If you were dealing with uh, like uh, uh, Young Mills theory, yes, I said you would say that this is amplitude is zero because you don't have any dimensionful quantities. But if you allow for dimensionful couplings, yeah, like dimensionful Wilson coefficient, then you have a freedom to write contact terms, yeah, which are terms that don't have any poles. They are not fixed by unitarity, so they are arbitrary from this point of view. And the arbitrariness corresponds to the arbitrariness of the Wilson coefficients in the Lagrangian. So what is this? So this is a dimension eight operator. I haven't written them yet, but uh, yeah, in U1, you would have F mu nu squared, uh, F mu nu, F mu nu squared, yeah? And then there's the other with the twiddle, and this has to be some combination of the two. And then you can do the same calculation that I did uh, before, yeah, to just uh, verify which exactly combination is this. The fact that there is only one here, that's particular for, case, uh, for, the, for this case, uh, of U1, if you go to SU2, you will have two, uh, because then you also have color. So you can play with color and this, this, and to, to, to have both asymmetric uh, objects, and then there will be two, and I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, if I have general SUN with N bigger than than three, yeah, then you have uh, uh, four uh, in, uh, uh, different inequivalent structures, yeah, that can appear, yeah, in this, and as a contact term, and that's course, each of them will correspond to a distinct uh, higher dimensional operator in the Lagrangian. Yeah, so that's the okay. So let me just uh, uh, walk you. Yeah. So what 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 happens next in this theory? So you can do the same calculation. Where were we? That's the graph. That's the Mills on shell. Uh, that's this calculations I've done more or less on this. Uh, and here is the unitarity, this is this, uh, blah, blah, so, okay, I think I can even show you, yeah, for, so this is the contact terms for SU2. Yeah, you can, have, the difference is that now you have a color things, yeah, so you can, you, you can, you can formula, have, have different ways of uh, obtaining a both symmetric complex. Mm -hmm. So now you can do the same thing, yeah, for different helicity configuration, yeah, so for example, if you uh, take minus, minus, plus, the result will be non-zero, yeah? So this, was, this is the zero was, was specific, yeah, for the all minus uh, case. So for the minus, minus, plus, yeah, you will get um, this sort of expression, yeah, for, for in the S channel. And then uh, you can do the calculations in all channels and you see that you always get the same spinner structure that gives you the correct little group weight. And you're getting different, in different channels, you're getting different color structures. So now, you when you have the residues, you can build the uh, you can build the you can build the amplitude. So that is consistent with this residues, and uh, the the way to so, so so you see that we have a residue in the S channel that also has a pole in the U channel. So it has you you, you have something that looks a bit weird, yeah. But it's a, if it's a double pole in two different kinematic variables, yeah, it's 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 okay. This is how this amplitudes look like. So you can uh, write down the amplitude that is consistent yeah, with this uh, uh, residues that, that you calculated from unitarity. And uh, this, is, this, is the, this is the answer. Uh, this is actually consistent. So what I wrote here is obviously consistent yeah, with the uh, S and T channel residue, yeah, because it's constructed such that yeah, the, 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 the S and T channel residues are explicit. It looks like sort of asymmetric because it has twice U pole and only uh, one S pole and uh, T pole. But actually, uh, in the Young Mills theory, there is something important which is called uh, Jacobi identity, and uh, so you can actually show that uh, 
this this is also consistent with the U poll. Yeah, if you, you have to use the I Jacobi identity and show that yeah, after you can actually uh, condense these two structures into one using Jacobi identity, and then you will get uh, you will also recover. So the amplitude that is consistent with the two residues is automatically consistent with the three residues, uh, provided your f structure constant satisfy Jacobi identity. And this is actually how, why, it, this is actually the more fundamental reason why there is a group, uh, Lie group structure in, in QFT. This Lie group structure turns out to be, um, is imposed on us by, uh, by unitarity. And, uh, and then you can, so you can, so, so the, the final amplitude in this channel, yeah, will be this, uh, 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 and again, up to a contact term. So when you are in the EFT, you will always have in this higher point amplitudes a contact term yeah, that is, uh, doesn't have any poles and corresponds to some higher dimensional operators. However, here, the situation is a little bit better yeah, because if you look at uh, this uh, uh, spinor prefactor, the, for this kind of heuristic configuration, you have uh, energy squared thir three, four, five, six. So, you, so the contact term has to have a dimension of uh, wait, I just one, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, and then CG is one over mass squared. So you have a, you have a dimension for so so, uh, so mass to the four prefactor. So your contact term has to be one over mass to the. Uh, sorry, it's, uh, it's just the end. So uh, mass to one, mass to two, mass three, mass four, mass five, mass six, mass to the four. So okay, so you, you're getting a uh, uh, contact term that is one one over uh, uh, mass uh, to the to the to the uh, four, huh? Y yeah, no, no, but there is yeah. So this is this is okay uh, here. Okay, so sorry, sorry, sorry. So the, the, the I forgot. Yeah. So the here. No, no, uh, okay, I just got confused by by this. But yeah, so. This spinor prefactor has the has dimension uh, six, mass to the six. Yeah, so this is of course okay dimensionally because this is one over mass squared, one over s. So this is fine. But now the contact term will will be the same spinor prefactor times some uh, constant, which is whose dimension has to be one over m to the six. So this corresponds to the dimension ten operator. So this is I think that um, in the on -shell, in, the, in this on -shell language. This expansion in the dimension is, is a little bit uh, more confusing, yeah, because uh, you see that at the, dimen at the, at the level of four-point function, we sometimes get dimension eight operators, as was in minus minus minus, and we sometimes get dimension ten operators. Uh, so this starts with dimension ten operators, which is in, in this case. So uh, this is this is a little bit uh, this is a, bit, a little bit confusing, yeah, but that's 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 uh, that's what it is, yeah. Uh, uh, you do, you don't have this. Uh, you, so dimension eight operators don't enter here, but they enter different helicity uh, amplitudes. But um, and you can do the same calculation, yeah, for the for the remaining helicity kind of calculation. And again, you will get some uh, spinor structure here. Uh, you will get actually contributions in the also in the young mills and from the dimension six operator squared. And then you have a contact term that is one over dimension eight, and that's another independent. Uh, uh, independent uh, dimension eight uh, operators or a set of operators. Yeah. So, for example, in, if you are in U1, which corresponds to Euler Heisenberg uh, EFT, you have two operators in the Lagrangian formulation and uh, for the, in the parity uh, invariant uh, case, and then you will have two independent contact terms at dimension eight. Yeah, that appear in this in this amplitude. Yeah, and this, there is a there is a one to one. Um, uh, Equivalence yeah, between the contact terms and the uh, the okay. So so this is yeah uh, uh, this is uh, how you uh, do the calculations in the EFT on shell yeah. So you, so you can do it. You, can, you start with the three point functions and you bootstrap it to higher point amplitudes and you can of course go to higher and higher uh, point amplitudes yeah using unitarity and at each point you. Uh, add all possible terms uh, consistent with a little group scaling into including the contact terms and these contact terms they uh, correspond to higher dimensional operators in the usual Lagra Lagrangian language yeah and so, so I haven't got maybe to the most interesting part but of, yeah that would require probably another hour yeah to 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 give uh, justice to it yeah 
what what are the what are the, the usage of that? And the, probably the best usage so far is for doing the RG calculations. So you can calculate the running of uh, the Wilson coefficient uh, uh, using this kind of language, which and it, it it introduces immense simplification compared to the usual Feynman Feynman uh, diagram calculations. Yeah, but. Uh, I think I'll just invite you to read it uh, in the in the notes, yeah, and uh, you can maybe email me questions, yeah, about it if you have. Uh, yeah, but uh, today I think they will will not uh, be able to to cover it. So I think, uh, yeah, let's finish now, and maybe yeah, 